In this video, I'm going to walk through the process that I use for 99% of my portrait photography on location. I just want to walk you through the process that I use in a photo to edit my photos that are on location portraits. Now, with my personal editing style, I also do use Lightroom and Photoshop, but I just want to walk you through Evoto AI and how incredible it is and how fast, simple, and effective you can get banger photos out of it. You don't need to take a ton of time. You don't need to do a lot of deep editing and you can do everything that you need to do right here in program. So let's go ahead and let's get started. All you need to do is walk step by step down the right hand side of the program. It's that simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to start in color adjustments here. And we will basically just start working with portions of the photo. And what we'll do is instead of full image, we don't want to edit the full image. We're going to go local. We're going to go to person. Now this is Ashley. Ashley's a model friend of mine. This process will work with any portrait session on location. It doesn't have to be a model. I'm just lucky enough and fortunate enough to work with models on the regular. So I figured I would use this photo because Ashley's amazing. But like I said, this will work on any type of location, any type of scenery, any type of subject. So like I said, we're going to select the person here. We'll just click person. There's only one person in this photo, so we don't need to decide which one. And I'm just going to go here. I'm going to turn the shadows up just a little. And by a little, I'm going to go between 75 and 80. And usually on my slider, that's pretty much where I go on all of these, every step, every process. But it is a, a little goes a long way type program. So make sure that you're watching what you're doing and don't go overboard. With that being said, I also want to turn the exposure up a little bit. Let's go right about there, about about a half a stop but because i did that i'm also going to compensate that with the contrast and i'm going to turn the contrast up because i don't want her looking like she's standing out too much but i want to bring some of that light back into her eyes and stuff like that so this is where we're at right now this is our straight out of camera and this is where we're at so i think that's pretty good as far as lighting on her so i'm going to go back up here and i'm going to go background and this is where I'm going to edit the background a little bit. I'm going to add some contrast. I'm going to go down here and add some vibrance and saturation. Let's go ahead and bring the shadows up a little too. There we go. Now, my personal editing style, I also like to make my greens a little bit more green. And by doing that, I go to the HSL turn those greens up just a little and then take the yellows and turn those up just a little too. I just like to do that. It's my style. It doesn't need to be done if you don't like it. Uh, we'll go ahead and bring the saturation down a little on those two. There we go. So there we go. We are living in a little bit better of a place with this photo instead of straight out of camera. It's already getting that style, that look you're going for. I think we're good on the color adjustment section. You can go ahead and try some of the other sliders if you want, but I think I'm good where I'm at. So let's go ahead to the next section, which is going to be your portrait retouching. And this is where the majority of the work happens, where the magic happens, where you get things looking crispy and you make those bangers. So like I said, we're just going to start at the top and walk our way down until the end. First thing we're going to hit is this blemish removal section, and we're going to go ahead and go freckles and acne all the way up to, like I said, about 80%. See how that does? And you can see that's just kind of smoothing the face a little bit. She doesn't have anything really major. A little spot right about here, a couple little spots on the smile line there. But overall, you can see that it's just doing amazing. All right, next step down, body blemish. We're going to go ahead and turn the body blemish up. She doesn't have any body blemishes, but I just like to do it because I feel like it smooths everything out just a little. There is a hot spot on her forehead here for face shine. So let's go ahead and turn that face shine up about 60%, 65 and there we go. No face forehead wrinkles, nothing to worry about there, no eye wrinkles. And if you wonder, if you're looking at your photo and you wonder if you need to do something, bring the slider all the way up, see what it does. If it doesn't do anything major, go back down. If it does, slide that slider up until you feel comfortable that it's doing something. Dark circles. No dark circles. As you can see, it doesn't do anything. And let's try eye, eye bags. So eye bags is basically just getting rid of a little bit of that darkness right about here. So we'll go ahead and leave that on. Let's go down to the next section here, which is going to be your smile lines. Now, I personally like smile lines, so I'm going to leave them the way they are. Uh, so let's go to lip wrinkles and flakes. Lip wrinkles and flakes just kind of softens the lips just a little. I feel like they're still working on that because it hasn't changed it too much. But I do like that they've added it. A neck wrinkles, just the way her head is... Tilted is giving her a neck wrinkle, so let's go ahead and get rid of those. And then double chin. 
So the double chin feature I use on almost every portrait, and it's not because everybody has a double chin. It's the fact that the way that I use my lighting, it often creates a harsh shadow down on the chin, especially if I'm not using uh, a reflector underneath or another light. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that double chin up to about 75%. And as you can see, what it's doing is just, just defining the chin line a little bit better. Now, a new feature that Evoto has recently released is this armpit touch-up. And I am so happy that they finally did something like this because this is one of those spots that is so hard for photographers to retouch. And it takes a lot of tedious work. And now we can go in here and just bring that up and just bam, your armpit looks nice just like that. So that's everything in the blemish removal section. So let's go ahead and move on to the skin retouching section. The first one we're going to work with here is going to be your smooth face skin, your dodge and burn. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to make your darks darker and your lights lighter. And it's going to blend everything together. So you can see there if I turn this off. And then I turn it back on. If you watch the forehead area, it smooths everything out. We're going to skip face skin smoothing because I feel like that makes them too plasticky. As you can see, it turns them real plastic. So I don't use that, but I do use body skin smoothing. And I turn that pretty much all the way up most of the time. Moving down to the next section, skin texture. I don't add any skin texture. I don't do anything with the glossiness, the clarity, any of that. But I do come down here to the next section, which is skin color. AI Unify Face Complexion. I'm going to turn that up, and basically what it's going to do is it's going to read all of the complexions on her face and blend them all together until they look nice and smooth. We're going to do the same thing with the AI Body Complexion. And now if you watch this, you'll be able to see it a lot more on the AI Body Unify than you do the, the face. So as you can see, it brought the skin color up in the legs, the belly, stuff like that. So this is what we're working with so far, straight out of camera and into the edit. Unify body complexion is kind of obsolete now that they did the AI Unify, but it's still in here. Uh, if you want to add a little bit of a tan, you can go in here and add a little bit of a tan. And what I usually do is I'll add a tan, but then drop it down to like 10%. So then you're still getting their skin tone, but you're adding a little bit of color to it. Temperature looks fine on her skin. Uh, let's go radiance up. And what that's going to do is that's actually going to just add a light. Next one we're going to use is rosy complexion. I use it on almost every portrait. I don't go all the way up to a sunburn, but I go about 25% and add a little bit of redness to the skin. I just think personally it looks better mixing it with the way that I do my blues and my greens. So that's everything for the skin retouching section. Let's close that up. Let's go to facial reshaping. We'll zoom back in here and we'll start on the uh, facial reshaping. So you can actually go now and you can turn where the head is looking. I don't want to do that. I like the way her tilt is. I think everything looks good in that portion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip all of that. I'm going to come down to the next reshaping section, which is going to be your face, your eyebrows, your nose, your mouth. And I usually only edit the face. So what I will do is I will go in here, bring the face in just a little, and you can see what it's really doing, depending on which way you want to go. And I don't want to go all the way. Let's go about 50%-ish. And then we will also come down here and bring the jawline in just a little. There we go. That's all I want to do. I don't want to touch up any of the other things on this photo. You can try if you want to try some of the other areas, but I typically don't. I think they look good. It's usually just the jawline and the overall face. I will also come down here and go face width. And I will bring that in just a little bit too. And there we go. You can see the difference. Not much. All of these other sections are different parts of the face. If you want to change the length or anything of a person's face, you can go in here and do that. I usually don't mess with too many of these. So that's everything in the facial reshape that I do. We can go to facial expression if we want. We can add a little bit of a smile to it. I don't want to unless it's like a very, very minuscule one. So let's go ahead. Teeth touch up, no teeth are showing in this photo, so I'm not worried about that. Let's go to eyes. Now, eye brightness, I do a lot, but you got to watch the way you do it. So what I do is I bring it up to 50%, but then I take the sclera and turn it back down, which is the sclera is your white part of your eyes. So I don't want that super white and plastic fake looking. Next, what I do is a little bit of eye reflection as well as iris flare. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's go ahead and remove those red veins a little bit from the eyes. There's not a lot in there. So those are your eyes. That's what I do on the eye section. Let's move down to makeup. Makeup, her makeup is on point. I don't really need to touch hardly anything. I do want to go down here and I want to darken her eyebrows just a little bit. Kind of fill those in just a, just a little. Other than that, eye makeup looks good. I don't need to touch any of that. Lip makeup looks good. I don't need to add anything as far as lipstick or contour, eyeliner. It all looks fantastic. Let's see if we do add just a little bit of blush though. 
A little bit of blush doesn't hurt. Let's just figure out a nice natural one, and then we'll bring it down. We don't need a lot. So this is what I do most of the time when I'm doing any sort of makeup editing is I will add it, but then I'll bring the amount down because I do want to show that natural look to a person. So here's once again, straight out of camera, and this is where we're at so far. Makeup section is complete. Let's go ahead and close that up. And we will go to hair. Now hair is another thing that I use quite a bit. It's really cool that they added this flyaway feature and stuff like that into an AI software. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go fill hair part line. And basically what this is gonna do is it's actually gonna fill in this section. And as you can see, it's just kind of adding some hair color there. I want a high cranial top as well. And what that's doing is it's just kind of making her hair a little bit more full. And then we'll go ahead and remove those stray hairs. Boom. Now I love her hair color, but I want to kind of adjust it a little bit. The first way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go white hair blackening. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna just kind of darken this area right here where my highlight was. It's reading it as she has white hair. Now she doesn't but it's reading it that way. So I wanna kinda of darken that. The next step is to add hair color. Now you can go crazy off the wall with this and add all sorts of crazy hair colors. I don't wanna do that. I love her hair color. I just want to add a little bit of dimension to it. So I'm gonna just go with one, but I'm gonna bring the amount way down to like nine. Then from there, I'm gonna take the darkness and bring that down as well to like nine. So now we've added a little bit of depth to her hair, but not a lot. I'm just basically adding a little bit of vibrance to it. And that is the hair section. So let's go ahead and close the hair section. The last one is the full body reshaping. This girl does not need full body reshaping. I'm not even really worried about this, but I'm gonna kind of show you what it does. So the AI reshape, you can actually reshape her entire body if you wanted. The body itself is either thinning or widening the body. Height, you can actually bring somebody and make them taller. Head size, uh, neck width, which I'm not going to do. However, neck length, I am going to touch just a little bit. Just her stance makes her neck look a little long in my eyes, in my opinion. So let's just bring it down to right about there, 50%. I mean, we could go all the way down if we wanted. We could go all the way up if we wanted. I don't even think 50 is needed. Let's go about 35%. Her arms, her arms are incredible. We don't need to do anything with her arms. Breasts, we can actually make the breasts bigger. Waist, waist looks fine. We don't need to thin the waist. If we do, let's just do it a little bit. Now, most of the time I will add hips, but because of her stance, when I add hips, I notice that it is making her very disproportional and is pushing her body over way this way. So I don't wanna do that. Leg width, leg width is fine. And then we will go leg length and we're just gonna make her legs just a little bit taller. So that is all the portrait retouching section. Let's go to background adjustments now. And we're gonna go background enhancements up to about 50%. All that's gonna do is just kind of brighten your background a little bit, make it a little bit more vibrant, make everything look kind of a little bit more artistic. And that's all we're gonna do in here. There's nothing more we can do in this photo from that. So we will go to clothing and accessories touch up now, which because it's now called clothing and accessories, it was not always called that. I feel like they're about to release more to this. As of right now, the recording of this, there is only a de-wrinkle. And we'll go ahead and de-wrinkle this. But as you can see, it got rid of a lot of those deep dark wrinkles and I don't like that. So the remove coarse wrinkles, I'm gonna bring back down. And that will bring those dark big wrinkles back but get rid of the small ones and that is our final photo right there that is our banger photo you can see straight out of camera to the final image just like that it's that simple you can go up then and you can hit export go ahead and export your photo and start sharing that get it to your clients make them buy prints they're going to want a print of something like this because it's absolutely incredible. And as always, if you are not yet, please consider subscribing so you can stay up to date on tips, tricks, and techniques in portrait editing.